when I worked in drug development, my role was develop drugs to slow aging, which is is crazy. You know, people go, what? <laughs> and I'll just like, you know, would casually drop it into a conversation like, oh, yeah, well, I'm developing drugs to slow aging. Like, because it was just so normal for me being involved in that world of aging research. But what we know is that age is our biggest risk factor for pretty much every single disease that drugs companies are trying to cure. So the idea is that if we can slow aging at the cellular level, even just a little bit, then actually we can have a positive impact on lowering the risk of many age-related diseases in one go. So this is where things like NAD start to, to appear um, because NAD has been one of these areas of science that's generated a huge amount of research um, and interest recently because it's been demonstrated as a molecule that can actually help to slow the cellular aging process. And that's quite fundamental if you think about it, something that can actually slow it down i mean how long has this been or how long have we known about this so i think you know scientists within the aging field have for a long time been you know looking at is this possible that we can slow cellular aging but i think the shift that's that's happened has really been over i'd say the last decade where you know the evidence has become so strong that there is not a single scientist within my field now that would argue that slowing the aging process isn't something that's absolutely possible. Whereas maybe 10 years ago, there would have still been scientists within our field that would have gone, mm, you know, not not 100% sure. Yeah, the, the evidence is building, but let's wait and see. Now, absolutely a given that slowing aging at the cellular level is something that is absolutely possible. And I guess where, you know, a lot of people go, well, why would I want to live longer? Or, you know, why would I want to increase my lifespan? That's sort of where their, their heads automatically go. But this is all about what we call increasing or improving your health span. Um, and your health span is the proportion of your lifespan that you will actually live in good health. Because I think we all know that unfortunately we have these longer lifespans, but we're not always in the best health for the majority of them. You know, anyone who has an older relative um, who's been unfortunate enough to end up in a, a care home or, you know, not be able to um, live an independent life due to age related illness and disease. Um, that is what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to allow it so we can live these longer lives well into our 80s and 90s, but actually be active and fit and, you know, go out with our friends and, and have an enjoyable time. And I think it, that is so important what you've just said there and understanding the difference between just living longer and that quality of life, that health span. Um, I mean, my my auntie recently passed away and she was exactly what you said. She was in a, um, in a care home. And really, you know, I, I look at that and think maybe, and, and who knows, for various different reasons, but had things been available back when she was, say, my age, she may not be in that situation. Um, and unfortunately, you know, passed away. Um, well, it was, it was probably for the best, actually, because it she wasn't, she didn't have a good quality of life at all. And yet there are so many advancements um, in medicine that we, we we are living long. You know, we're no longer dying of childbirth, or hopefully not in this country, um, or the things that we used to die of 200 years ago. So things have changed. And like you say, it's just keeping that quality, keeping that energy. You know, I, I'm very much into my fitness. I still want to be going to the gym when I'm 90 um, and, and, and really feeling the energy that I've got today. And I really believe that that's absolutely possible. And yet I speak to a lot of women my age that just just don't believe it. They're just like, well, some people are like, why, why do you want to live that long? You know, why would you want to be like that? Yeah, and it's great that you can see that. Um, because like you say, many people don't realize and a huge part of my passion is is trying to educate people on what's coming. Like I have seen the science. This is what I live day in, day out. And I know what's possible and I know what's coming and I know how this is going to change aging as we know it. But there's going to have to be a huge shift 
in people's perception and understanding of aging because unfortunately you know up until recently it was it was something that was considered inevitable and you know quite frankly not very pleasant and when something is is has that kind of um thing is you know stigma associated with it people have a mindset of like oh, well, you know, it's just something that happens. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a natural process. We shouldn't interfere. We should embrace it. Da, 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 da. Um, you know, the usual things because, you know, there is no nicer alternative than, than that. But now we really know there is another option. You know, I always say within our lifetimes, we will take drugs, you know, there may be drugs, there may be supplements, other molecules that will will be designed to slow our rate of aging and will reduce the risk of of age related diseases um and and that's that's huge um so yeah what are the um major contributing factors to aging so what's known is that despite the fact that for a long time we have associated aging with the outside um, and try to treat it from the outside, everything to do with aging starts at the cellular level. It's all about the cellular health. And now as scientists, what we understand is that there are 12 key root causes or, or kind of things that go a bit wrong in the cells as we get older that cause the aging process. Um, and we refer to them as the hallmarks of aging, but essentially they're like 12 critical functions in our cells that start to, to fall apart <laughs> um, as we get older. And um, what's been found is that if you can actually reverse some of these hallmarks of aging in the cells, you can reverse aging across the whole body. And this is where NAD comes in. So. NAD is a very exciting molecule. Um, it's something that's naturally found in every single cell in our body. And it's something that has been found to actually impact all of the cellular root causes of aging. So do we want more NAD the older we get or, or less NAD? How, how does that work in, in, in the aging process? Yeah, so, so NAD is, is, is very important what we want is we want more of it. And right. basically this is because it is a, a natural molecule. It's found in every single cell in your body and it's involved in over 300 different reactions actually. So very, very important for keeping us ticking along on the inside. But I guess what it's most famous for are two key things. The first is energy production. So NAD plays a very important part in the pathway that takes the food that we eat and converts it into the energy that all of our cells in our body need to function. The second thing that NAD is really important for is actually repair in the cells. So if you have high levels of NAD, you get high levels of uh, repair and energy production. If you have low levels of NAD, then any energy production and also repair get turned down. So when we're young, we have really high levels of NAD, but as we get older, our NAD levels decline. And when, this- Yeah, well, I was, sorry, I was gonna say, when do they start declining? Is it too late? <laughs> this, well, do you know what? The really scary thing is it actually declines from birth. So as all the studies show that on average, we are losing 50% of our NAD every 20 years. So even by the time we're age 20, we've left, we've sort of lost half of what we were born with. By 40, that amount is halved again, and then again and again. Um, so this means by much elderly ages, when you look at the levels of NAD in the cells, there's actually not very much left at all. And that's quite scary considering, I've just said it's involved in over 300 different reactions. It's critical for energy production. It's critical for repair. So when levels become really low, what you see is a lot of cellular damage building up. And this is what actually starts to cause all of these problems in our cells that result in the aging process. Mm -hmm.